I was 14. I remember that it was the end of the day of school and it was cloudy. Over the loudspeaker, a very teary administrator let us know that Selena had been shot and killed. I was in a sort of weird situation because the school I went to was in Corpus Christi, Texas, and a lot of the people I went to school with were related to her in some way. Not only was she Selena, but to the community she was also a neighbor. She went to the store at the corner. She often was seen at HEB shopping for groceries. Selena had been in business for some time with a woman called Yolanda Saldivar. This woman initially was a fan who ran her fan club. She slowly became close with Selena and became treasurer of the entire fan club organization. I'm sure it was worth a ton of money at the time. As Selena began to gain more exposure, the fan club began to earn more money. And during an audit, it was determined that money was in fact missing. After an investigation, they found out that Yolanda was embezzling money from the fan club and had been for years. She had been using this money to purchase gifts for Selena. Yolanda was fired immediately and Selena was heartbroken. She didn't think that her friend would do this to her and she did very much consider Yolanda her friend. March 31st, 1995, Selena was supposed to meet Yolanda at the Days Inn Hotel for some paperwork and other things that were missing from the business. When she arrived a little after 8 a.m., Yolanda told her that she had been raped in Mexico and needed to go to the hospital, in which Selena took her. After determining that no crime had taken place, Selena and Yolanda returned to the Days Inn from the hospital, where Selena was able to recover the paperwork. It's reported that Selena had dumped out Yolanda's belongings, saw the paperwork as well as the gun. Yolanda picked up the gun and pointed it at Selena and fired. Selena ran with a gunshot wound all the way from the room to the main office in which 911 was called. An ambulance arrived at the scene at about 1 minute and 55 seconds later. At that time, she was laying in the hotel lobby and her heartbeat was very slow. The paramedics were doing CPR to keep her blood circulating, but it's reported that the paramedics had said that by the time they had gotten there, it was already too late. A paramedic is quoted as saying that when he arrived, he found her in a thick pool of blood from her neck to her knees, all the way around on both sides of her body. They also couldn't locate a pulse when they arrived. The doctor that examined Selena said that a pencil-sized artery leading from the heart had been cut in two from the hollow point bullet. Selena had lost about six units of blood. Despite a breathing tube and everything else, there was no way to save her. She bled to death in minutes. She was pronounced dead on March 31st, 1995 at 1.05 p.m. at age 23, 16 days before her 24th birthday. During the third hour after the shooting, an autopsy was performed due to the media's overwhelming interest. They revealed that the bullet had entered Selena's upper right back near her shoulder blade, passed through her chest cavity, and severed the right subclavian artery and exited her right upper chest. It took minutes from the point of impact of the bullet that Selena virtually lost all of the blood in her body. Doctors had also said that if the bullet had been only a millimeter or two higher or lower, it would have been way less severe. So the conclusion of it was obviously that Selena was killed as a result of massive blood loss and cardiac arrest. When she was presented to the coroner, she was submitted wrapped in a blue cloth, a hospital sheet. Uh, the clothing had been cut away and removed during therapeutic intervention. It was submitted separately in a transparent bag and consisted of green sweatpants, black bra, and brown and white bikini panties. Blood is present all over many of the areas of the clothing. There is multiple inquiries from the medical center personnel regarding the green sweatshirt portion that was worn by Selena, but they never presented that to the medical the medical examiner's office. She had no jewelry or any kind of other personal effects. The external examination showed that she was well-nourished, normal, slender, 
She was listed as an apparent Caucasian lady at 165 centimeters long and stated at the age of 23. No rigor or liver mortis was evident at this point and she was still warm. She's reported to have about 25 centimeters long hair and it was black and curly. Her eyes are brown, her teeth are natural and in really good condition. Her external genitalia is normal. The pubic hair is shaved laterally. She has small scars that are noted over the anterior knees and upper legs. And a one centimeter transverse linear scar is noted immediately above the edge of the right pubic area. So she may have had like her appendix out or something. Evidence of therapy includes a She's reported to have artificial fingernails up to a centimeter in length and bright red polish. According to the autopsy report, she literally bled out so fast she couldn't even get cold. Like it just happened so fast that it was a major artery. It would be like her heart exploded almost. Everything else appeared to be normal as far as like her neck organs, her cardiovascular system, her respiratory tract. She was perfectly healthy at the time of the murder. And then she did, of course, have the evidence of the cyst in her right ovary, which determined to be normal. She also had a negative alcohol and drug screen. It's kind of crazy because the way that she shot it, I mean, that obviously wasn't like an aimed shot. It was a just shot in the dark, one of those Hail Mary shots, and just happened to hit Selena like in the most perfect place and killed her in just minutes the news really really milked that one and then her father also was no better in that aspect my cousin is actually in ab jr's band was in his band corpus is really small it's big but it's small so they all kind of everybody kind of knows each other or is at least a cousin of somebody it affected Corpus, I think, a lot differently than it did the rest of the world, as you can imagine. I want to hear your thoughts on what you thought of this. Were you even alive when this happened? I knew that it happened a long time ago, but... <clears throat> I do want to give a super special shout out to my producers of today's episode. Richie the Wolf, Dojin, and Dazzling Dice. Thank you so much for your continued support. You mean more to me than I could ever express to you. And as always, this is Crystal. We are getting spooky, and I'm out.